everyone. Welcome to episode 46 of the Arianets podcast. My name is Ariel and this is a video podcast where I talk about all the things that I have been knitting on this past week. Lots of spinning things too. And yeah, just, you know, things I've been working on. I have no finished objects this week, but a lot of exciting things on my needles and my spinner. So let's get right into it. So today it is actually Sunday, October 8th because, so, and I say actually, because I usually film on Saturdays. Also, I'm just realizing that there's like this light situation happening, but maybe it'll go away for a little bit. So I'll just move to the side here, but I usually film on Saturdays. Today it is a Sunday. I feel like I also recently filmed on a, a Sunday and it is because I had, oh yeah, it was last weekend. So, oh no, no, I did film last weekend on a Saturday. Anyway, I feel like those, there's sometimes I have to film on a Sunday because I am busy on the Saturday. So we are going to try and do a same day film and upload. So I usually try and upload on Sundays before the afternoon uh, Pacific time because I live in Seattle, Washington. Uh, but today it'll be a little later since I am filming it now on Sunday. But we are going to try and get it uploaded today. And yeah, so I usually start with what I am wearing. And I have, so as I've, I think I've mentioned, I have no finished objects this week. But so when I was deciding what I should wear, because I usually like to wear any like brand new finished objects so that you could see it, but I don't have one this week. So I am wearing something that I was, a, it was a finished object a while ago, but I don't think I wore it in a podcast because when I finished this, I think I had other finished objects that I wore. It might've been a little too hot at the time to wear. Actually today and this whole weekend has been such a nice, the weather has been so nice. Like it is cool. It is, you know, not really cold, but cool enough that I could still wear some hand knits. And so it's just been really nice. Also, hence the sun kind of coming in. Uh, but anyway, I am wearing my Straya cardigan by Andrea Mowry and it's just something that it's one of my favorite cardigans and I was just like I should wear it because I don't think I've worn it in a podcast so here's what it looks like again I do apologize for like this lighting situation from the window but actually I wonder if I open the window if it'll fix it but then maybe it's too sorry. nope that did not fix it okay Anyway, we will just live with it and hopefully it's okay. But Stry Cardigan and it is, I believe, half fisherman's rib with stripes, as you can see. I the yarn I use, the main color is Ampersand Fibers, Caslon Fingering in the colorway Oat 01. Uh, Ampersand Fibers is the yarn brand from La Mercerie, which is a store on Bainbridge Island here in Seattle. And this was the first time I've knit with Ampersand Fibers and I really like it. It is, I think it might be the first time that I've used, a, I believe it's Corydale wool. And I think that this was the first time I've used it. First time I have a garment worn it and I really like how this one in particular feels. And so I definitely want to use Ampersand Fibers again. And the minis, also oh, the stripes, I use some minis from Explorer Knits, the Seattle Tonal Collection. So I use all of the tonal colors and I just love how it turned out. I've been wearing it a lot of the time. I think the fit's really nice. Oh, let me button this up because I did take final measurements of it. So. Oh, and I, so I knit size one, I used US two needles, and I got a finished measurement of 34 inches in circumference. So that gives me four inches of positive ease, about. And I, so I am wearing a shirt under this though, so might be slightly less positive ease, but oh, I mean, 
it's it's fine. So I took the measurements with it buttoned, so that's why I decided to button it. But here it is. I think it's just a really nice fit. I really like it. Love how it looks and just such a good good cardigan. Would recommend. I know that it's uh actually so I was watching uh Shreya, Stitch by Shreya uh is her podcast. I've been watching it and I noticed that she she is currently working, she's picked back up her Straya cardigan and I love the colors of hers. And so actually maybe that's why I thought about wearing this in today's podcast was because I saw Shreya working on hers. So go Shreya, you can do it. Um, so yeah, so that is what I am wearing. It is, I finished it, I think a couple months ago at this point, but I'm still loving it. We've got quite a lot of whips to talk about. Also, some new cast-ons, some very recently new cast-ons also. So let's, let's just get started. Let's first talk about the two test knits that I have. Okay, so this first one, I, okay, this week was very much like I want to get lots of progress done on certain things. Like I want to get closer to finishing certain projects, especially on my test knits. So I feel pretty good and accomplished about how much I got done on some of these. So this is my Ashling sweater. Pattern is by Maddie Mo, And let's see. So I finally, okay, I believe I have multiple stitch markers on here, but I think, Okay, so sorry, first off, this is a bottom up construction sweater and it is a split hem. It is very cute. It is kind of like a high low, so the back hem is a little longer than the front. It has a really cute overlap section here. And the yarn I am using for this is Woolberry Fiber Co. in the Berry Surrey Base in the colorway Hello Autumn. And I am knitting size two, which should give me 36 inches final like circumference of the sweater. I am using US three needles for the body. And let's see. So last time I've talked about it, I was at this marker here. So I've worked more of the body. I was thinking about maybe cropping it slightly from what the pattern uh, recommends, but I actually knit it to the length that the pattern says, which is, I believe, 13 inches from the front hem up until the underarm. And then I split. So I split for to start working like the armhole, the back and the front. And then, so now I am working flat on the back and I think I've got a few inches going so far. It's looking good, I think. I did finally break into my second skein of yarn and there was, I think, a, you can tell the difference between the skeins and they always, it's always recommended when you work with hand dyed yarns to alternate skeins so that it looks a lot more even throughout your entire project. And sometimes I'll do it, sometimes I won't. And to be honest, unless it's like really, really noticeable or it doesn't look like the same color, uh, which I don't know if that has ever happened to me, I it doesn't bother me too much. So like and for this project in particular, I could tell a difference, but it as an overall, like I, it doesn't bother me too much. So my second skein has a lot more like white spots and also oddly started doing some color pooling. Like there's a dark spot like right here, even though that this part, I was still working in the round which is interesting. So, so yeah, my second skein has a lot more, yeah, yeah, especially on the sides. Sorry, again, this light, but on the sides, you can tell it just like right here. It is not a shadow like this. 
dark to light is because of a change in skin. But honestly, like, I, I just doesn't, for me, it doesn't really bother me. I could definitely see this bothering someone else, but for me, it's okay. But it is something like I noticed. But again, I chose not to alternate skeins, so. Uh, but anyway, I am very happy to be on my second skein because it also makes me feel like I'm making progress on a project. So yeah, I'm still just working flat on the back. The color actually looks a lot better right now, the flat part on the back versus kind of like right here. But anyway, so this is what I have. This sweater is going to be so light and fluffy and airy and I'm really looking forward to the finished objects for this. I still have a little, I think a little over a month left for this test knit and so I'm feeling pretty good about it but I do usually like to get test knits done before the deadline because I don't like to feel panicked. So I do want to like actually make some like significant progress on this within the coming uh, few weeks. So yeah, because after, after, so I'm still working on the back, still need, then I, then I will need to move on and do the front. And then I still have two sleeves to do. So yeah, I think once I get to the sleeves, hopefully it'll feel like it will go by really fast, but yeah, we're chugging along, but I, yeah, I'm loving how it's turning out so far. Okay, so that is test knit number one. And then I only have another um, two test knits going on right now. I definitely feel like towards the end of this year, I've been slowing down my test knits, which I think is a good move for me to, because there's so many patterns that I want to knit. And I like having, I think, I think it's good. Like two feels good for me right now to have nothing more than two test knits at a time for right now. But so my second test knit is the Paisley Knits one for the Kalini blouse, which is another Surrey sweater. But this one is uh, two strands of Surrey held together. The Ashling sweater is just one strand of Surrey. And let me show you my progress on this because I've also made good progress. So I finished both sleeves on this sweater. Let me hold it back here. I finished two sleeves. I'm feeling very accomplished. I, yeah, I just wanted to get the sleeves out of the way and so that all I have to do next is to work on the body. And as far as modifications go, I think I mentioned this last time, but just as a refresher. So I did do one modification to the sleeves. So they are knit straight, so no decreases on the sleeve. But I personally don't like for the cuff of the sleeve to be really wide. I do like it to be a little more fitted because I... I like to roll up my sleeves, especially if I'm just like, I just need to like wash my hands or something. I, I want to roll up my sleeves. I don't want them to fall while I'm like trying to wash my hands. And so anyway, I wanted to do some decreases. So what I did was I did knit the sleeve straight, so like no decrease throughout the whole sleeve, but right at the end, once it got to the length that I wanted it, I did decreases for one round. So I did knit two together across the entire round. So it decreased the total number of stitches in half, I believe. Yeah. And then I did, I did the I cord bind off and I did size down my needle. I am planning on, okay. So for the V neck for the neckline, I also sized down my needles, uh, I believe by one size to do the eye cord edging for the neck because I wanted it to be slightly, like I didn't want it to droop down any lower. And then for the sleeve, I also sized down for the eye cord bind off. I don't think I would size down for the body hem eye cord bind off because it is just, it's okay if that 
part of the body kind of, I don't want it to like tighten for the body. So I might just leave that same needle size, but for the sleeve cuff and for the neck, I size down for the I-cord. I feel like I said that in like 10 different ways. Apologies, <laughs> but that is what I did. So yeah, it's a very fluffy sweater. It's going to be, I think, really nice and cozy. Uh, yeah, and I'm just like, one thing that does kind of, or I always feel a little anxious about Surrey sweaters is how much it will grow when I block it. I did do, I did a gauge swatch and I did block it. And so I should be good, but it always kind of worries me. So for this sweater and the Ashling sweater, I'm just like hoping it doesn't grow too much after blocking, but we should be, we should be good. So that is how this one's going. Oh, yarn, Woolberry Fiber Co. And a Berry Surrey base. And in the colorway, I smell snow. And then for the size, I am knitting size one. And I'm using US six needles for this. So yeah, I'm just double checking here. Yeah, US six for, for this sweater. So I've just got more, I've got more body to go. I'm good on yarn though, because right now I have this much yarn and then I also have one more full skein left. So I'm pretty sure I'll be fine for the body. I was a little worried just because like it was, I knew that it was enough Surrey to make a cumulus blouse because I have made, I've made a cumulus blouse with Surrey before, but because this was a textured or this is a textured pattern. I wasn't sure how much like maybe more yarn it was going to eat. And, you know, even though it is like a v-neck Surrey sweater, I just wasn't sure yardage wise how it was going to going to be. I think for like for the pattern or what the pattern right now has estimates for yardage, I was good. But, you know, I just I just never know. So but it looks like I'm I will be good. So Looking forward to having another Surrey sweater to my knitted wardrobe. Okay, so that is two of my test knits. And yeah, made good progress, I feel like. Okay, so next up, let's talk about, ooh, let's talk about this one. I've made good progress on the sweater because I really just want to finish it. Um, Okay, this is the Tessellated Pullover by Andrea Mowry. And look, I finished one sleeve. I finished one sleeve. I actually finished it this morning. So I'm feeling good. I'm feeling accomplished so far today on my knitting. And yes, Tessellated Pullover. The yarn, so this uses three different kinds of yarn. So for my main color, which is this dark green, it is the Farmer Daughter Fiber Spinster's Daughter in the colorway York. And then for the color changing yarn that you can see is Spin Cycle Yarns dyed in the wool in the colorway Every Rose. And then the Surrey, which is the I don't know if it's, you can see which parts are fluffy, but it's this like terracotta rose kind of fluffy columns here. That is Farmer Daughter Fibers O Dang in the colorway clay. And yeah, so this is a sleeve. I followed the instructions for the sleeve and the decreases. And I think, so I did make one change or one slight modification. So I, oh, and also as far as progress goes, the last time I talked about it, I was here, I believe. And so I pretty much knit like almost pretty much an entire sleeve from the last time I talked about it. So, but anyway, so there's this stitch marker here and this was where, so the instructions just say to do the decrease section like every inch or something 
And I, I have a feeling that this, the way that this is knit, like the stitch and in, in this, like the stitch pattern, it's going to grow lengthwise, but I did try it on and the sleeve was a little short over here. And so I did do like three more repeats of the stitch pattern before I decided to do the cuff and bind off. But other than that, so I just added this much length to the sleeve. And if I hold it up, maybe you can see. So this sweater, yeah, I, I think that it is going to grow lengthwise, but right now this is where the sleeve is. And so I think even if it, I'm hoping that it'll grow out just slightly. So I'm trying to grab it. If it grows out just slightly, I think it'll be the perfect length. I would actually be very happy if it grows out even longer because for the body, it is going to be really cropped. And so it would be lovely if this grew out, I don't know, like an inch or so. That would be great. Or width-wise, I would also like it to grow. <laughs> I would just, I would, this is one project where I'd be very happy if this grew to be bigger. But we will see what happens. So I'm actually feeling pretty good about finishing this project soon because I'm at the point where I definitely can finish it soon because all I have is one more sleeve, an entire sleeve because I did not pick up for the sleeve yet. I just have one more sleeve and then the neckline. Although this time I will do the neckline before I cast on the second sleeve or pick up for the second sleeve. So I'm going to do the, do the neckband because I think that'll just make it look like it's almost finished. And then I think it'll motivate me to work on the second sleeve even more. So we're getting close. I, the yarn management on this project just really is, I think it would be the one reason why I wouldn't knit this sweater again, or at least anytime soon, because it is kind of a pain and it definitely slows me down. And if you know me, I like to knit fast. <laughs> so, but I will say that I think the only time I have a problem with the yarn management is in the round. And it is just particularly annoying for the sleeves, just because you have to do it so many times and since the rounds get smaller, less stitches as you decrease, I feel like I am having to move my yarn and work my work it around like super often. So it is just slightly annoying, but I think I got a system figured out, which makes it slightly less tangles. Like I just need to purposefully like move things around every round and then it's okay. So. I think, I, I feel like once I, because I'm in the groove of having that set up, I should just finish up the second sleeve and just get it done with. So that's kind of like what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. I want to get this done this month. It's definitely possible time-wise. Just depends like if I decide to work on this as much as I need to, to get it done this month. But it is something I want to do is to have it done this month. Oh, I don't know if I said I am knitting size one. I am using US four needles for the body and then US two for the hems and the cuffs and the neckline. And I just really want to block this because I think that it'll, I'm, I think I'll, I love the colors. It is the main reason why I decided to knit this and to knit this with the exact same yarn as Andrew Mary did for her her sample. So I love it. It's just been a little bit of a pain to knit. But yeah, I think blocking it will probably relax everything a bit. I heard that because this is mosaic knitting. I think I've read or heard that it does it does grow a bit after blocking. So I'm curious to see how that works. Because this is my first time doing mosaic knitting, I think. So yeah, it's really cool. I think it's very clever on how it works so that you can get this kind of like pattern with all the different yarn and textures. So 
overall, like it's it's just a really cool pattern. It's just, man, it's the yarn management that I just, it just really got me on this. So we're almost there. We're so close. I'm curious to see how this fits in the end because I think I would, and I, I've, I think I mentioned this before, but I would have knit size two, except for the fact that when I bought this, so I bought the kit to get the yarn and they only had size one available. And I think the only difference yarn wise between size one and size two was I would need one more skein of the main color, which actually, ah, I have no idea, but it would have been just one more skein of the main color, but they ran out. I was thinking about buying the kit for size one and seeing if I could just buy one skein of the other color, but just in case, you know, sometimes they, I don't know if, because, so I bought this online. I didn't know how they did their, what is it called? Like their inventory on like kits versus like if you wanted to buy the skeins individually. But at the time I was so worried that I would, if I missed out on this opportunity, I wouldn't be able to buy the yarn again for a very, very long time. So I was like, I could just knit size one. It still gives me positive ease. Size one, I, I believe, should give me three inches of positive ease versus size two would have given me eight inches of positive ease. And I do prefer more ease in general. Like I think around like six inches is like ideal for, for some, like in general. But like for this cardigan, for example, it's about four inches of positive ease. So with this sweater, depending on how hard I could block it to be a larger circumference. It'll be less positive ease than this cardigan, but like this cardigan also feels fine. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out what kind of, in what kind of patterns or types of clothing I like certain kinds or numbers of like negative or positive ease. So it'll be interesting. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I, I am very much looking forward to the finished object for this. So there it is, one sleeve done. Oh, I love the colors. I'm looking at the fade on this sleeve too. It's so good. Yeah, okay. So that is that is all I have to say for, for now on the tessellated pullover. Okay, next up, my friendship pullover. Okay, it's in pieces right now. Ooh. So this is another sweater. Actually, I've just noticed like, there's so many sweaters I'm making that are bottom up. Is bottom up sweaters like trending right now? Or like, you know, is it is it a popular construction? I know, I don't think I've, I mostly hear people say they don't like bottom up construction sweaters. And while I would say top down is my favorite, I think bottom up doesn't bother me too much. But yeah, the tessellated pullover is bottom up. My Ashling sweater is bottom up. And now the friendship pullover is also bottom up. So you've seen this piece before. This is what I have for the body. Nothing has changed on it, but I thought I would just show it to you. I finished, I finished a sleeve. So we've got We've got one sleeve. So I believe that this is my stitch marker from last week. So we've finished this sleeve. I've worked it exactly to the pattern. So the number, I did the decreases, the same, whatever the pattern says. And I've also, I think at the end they say after, in, oh, sorry, not decrease, increases. I did the increases for the amount it says and then also to work a bit more just like straight like no increases for a certain amount until you get a total number of rows and or rounds and I counted that and I, I think my gauge is like spot on for this project so I got the exact number of rounds to work and with the exact measurements it needs to be. So this is the sleeve. It should hit to be wherever, yeah wherever it's going to connect to the body for the underarm. And, oh, before I like continue on, 
The yarn I'm using is Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino in the colorway Plum Play. And for my size, so I am knitting size A, which is the smallest size, and I'm using US 5 needles for the ribbing and US 7 for the body. And I, for my size, like this is, it took pretty much one ball to make the sleeve. So that was good. I don't need to connect like new yarn. I really don't like it when like in the middle of a sleeve, I have to connect a new ball of yarn. Like I'm like, oh, it's just another end to weave in. So I like, it's not a big deal, but like, I don't know why, but this made me really happy. So one sleeve per ball for my size. And then I started my second sleeve. And so we are actually, I should hold them up together so we can see how close. Oh yeah, we're, we're pretty close to finishing the second sleeve. So my goal is to finish this second sleeve today. And then I want to join it all together. So I think, well, I, it's, can I do this? So at some point it'll connect like this, I think. And then we'll continue on from down here all the way to the top. And then we'll be like, we'll be done. So yeah, my goal is to connect the body and the sleeves today. And I think that that is very doable. And I actually, oh, so if, if you've been following along with this friendship pullover, I am making this pullover with my friend Megan, who is a naughty mess on Instagram and YouTube. She also has a great podcast. Definitely check it out if you haven't already. And so we're both making this friendship pullover and we're doing a very casual knit along. So it's basically just if you also are making the friendship pullover or want to make it with us, you could join. It's a very short timeline because for me and Megan, that's what we decided on for both of us. And so we our cast on day was September 15th and then our end date is October 20th is I think what we said, but we are doing something fun next weekend. And I was like, we are both close to finishing Megan. Uh, from the last time I've talked to her, which was yesterday, said that she was, she's already connected for like her sleeves and the body. And so I was like, do you think that we could finish, like both of us could finish our friendship pullovers by this weekend? Cause then we could take really cute pictures together this coming weekend. So I think that that is what our new goal is going to be. I think I think it's definitely doable. I just really need to like sit down and knit on this and I can get it finished and hopefully blocked. Ideally it'd be blocked and ready to go uh, for our fun, fun little weekend uh, this coming weekend. So I've got, got a few days to finish this up, but I think it's possible. Our friend Sylvan also finished, she like, I think she knit hers in a week, I think. But she also has one, so I was like, it would be so cute for all three of us to get a picture together. So we will see, we will see what comes of this. But yes, it's been really fun. I know, again, it's been, it was kind of a short, I think we gave ourselves like five weeks, but I guess now it'll be four weeks to make this sweater. And it's just so fun. It's so fun knitting the same things as your friends. So yeah, I've enjoyed this process a lot. Oh, I don't think I've mentioned. So the friendship pullover is a pattern by Amy Schur. And I believe that this is the third pattern I have made of hers. And I don't know what it is, but I have like fully enjoyed the entire process of making all of her patterns. Like I've made a lot of other <laughs> garments and I've enjoyed them. I like to finish objects. Sometimes I like don't like the process, but love to finish objects and just all mixtures of that. But there, I don't know what it is about Amy Schur's patterns, but the entire process and end product of what I've made are things I like absolutely love. So very good. I want to make even more of her patterns. There's ones that I have like saved. Like I want like in my, 
I usually favorite them in Ravelry. I don't have like, I'm not very organized with like bundles of stuff, but like there's things, there's more Amy shirt patterns I want to make and I just haven't gotten to them yet, but I want to get to them. So, but yeah. Okay, friendship pullover. I'm like, is that it? I think I said everything about it so far, but yeah. Hopefully the next time you see this, it'll be done. We'll see. Okay. Next up is my Mackenzie scarf by Sari Nordland. Okay. I, this is an, oh man, this project is kind of like addictive to work on. It's really hard for me to put this down once I get started on it. And I have made, again, good progress. I feel like I might've like doubled what I had from last time. So this is one side. It is a two color brioche scarf. So this is the dark side and this is the light side. And so as you can see from my marker here, that's where I last left off last week. And so I've made good progress. You can now see, I think last time it was really hard to see that there is this garter stripe that goes diagonally across. And I think there might be four or five of them down the entire scarf. It's going to be a very long scarf, but it's brioche. And so it's going to be very squishy and comfortable to wear. And yes, yeah, so let me look at my notes here. I am using two colors, as you can see. One is light, the other is dark. And they are both they are both Olivia and Oliver Fibers classic sock in the colorway. The light one is feather. I will try to hold this up and then hold up the, the ball here. So this is feather. And then the dark side. Sorry, let me hold it up with this. Oh, I love how this color is turning up too. The dark color is woodland. So that is what that looks like. And I'm really happy with how it's looking. I love how, I'm just very, very happy with the color combo. I mean, I, it felt pretty safe to me to have it being contrasting enough, uh, but you know, just seeing it actually worked up just makes me really happy. And I feel like it's something like, because it's a scarf, the colors are something that will probably match a lot of things in my wardrobe. So I won't have to worry about it, like not matching like clothes that I'm wearing with it. Not that you like absolutely have to match your scarf with your clothes, but it's, they're more neutral colors. And so I do like that for a scarf. I think it's very cool how it's constructed to have a diagonal like garter strip that will be going across. And so it keeps it interesting. It's not just like brioche forever and ever. Like, I feel like it does keep it interesting enough to get me to like keep working on it. And so that's how it's looking. And I'm like, I'm trying to decide like, do I have a favorite side? I think that it looks the coolest on the light side, I think, because I think the stripe just stands out a little bit more on the, the light side than it does on the dark side, but I also just love this color. Mm. So good. Uh, yeah, so that is the Mackenzie. It is an older pattern. I forgot to look up like when this pattern came out, but it's, it's not a new pattern, but it has been on my list of things I wanted to make for a while. And so I'm really happy to finally have it on my needles. It is one size since it is a scarf. And I am using US four, yes, US four needles to make this, which I believe is the recommended needle size. So yeah, feeling good about this one too. It is a great one. It's a great thing to work on because once I got the pattern down on making this, like the diagonal garter stitch thing. I don't need to look at the instructions to work on this. So it's, it's also very like meditative 
of a knit. So yeah, so that one has been going well. And then we've got, oh, we've got more stuff. Okay, are you ready? So this one might be a shorter, shorter one to talk about, but don't worry, I am still working on my Manhattan Hat Light, which is a pattern by Tori Yu. I love, love the Manhattan Hat patterns. Like I, I have the bulky, the bulky was the first one I've made. Loved it so much that I made the like original Manhattan hat, which I think uses a worsted weight yarn, but I use the DK weight yarn and it was all right. Or like, I think I could have sized down because it is a little, anyway, I still love it. And now I'm making Manhattan hat light. So I do have all three Manhattan hat patterns. I just love it so much. And this one feels extra special because I am knitting with my hand spun yarn. This is my first knit. Like this first project I am knitting with my hand spun and so it just feels extra special and yeah I don't think I showed it last week because I didn't work on it but I am I am still loving it I am still working on it and I've made a little bit more progress here I love how <laughs> how it looks like those stripes on it from my hand spun and I think it's really cool oh by the way before i continue talking about how much i love this yarn is my hand spun but fiber it is bfl in the colorway whole latte love so i bought a dyed braid of fiber in the oh yeah the colorway whole latte love from art and alchemy fiber arts and i am making adult small size and i'm using us2 needles and i think I think what's really cool and I'm hoping you can kind of see it is like this was my second ever spin and so there's still a lot of inconsistencies in the yarn so but it's really funny because from the I was gonna say top but from the start of this you can tell it's kind of flaring out because the yarn was a lot bulkier down here and had a lot more like little floofs of yarn and even like throughout like this row there's just like big chunks of fluff um, just from the spinning inconsistency but as I keep going like my my spinning got better or more consistent so now it's starting to look more consistent consistent in the stitches which I think is just it's really cool to see like oh there was progress and that like I don't know I, to me that's like really really fun to see and so I spun this yarn on my electric eel wheel nano so it was a small one and so I did have to I spun the entire braid which was four ounces but I did have to split them up into three smaller like skeins and so I have like three separate wound up balls of yarn of this and so this I'm still on my first one which I find kind of surprising I was shocked at how much knitting I was like not sure yeah like how much yarn this was going to use because this is my first time knitting with my hand spun but with all of this I've still got I still got this much left on my first ball and so I still have two more before it's like one full skein kind of so I'm not even or maybe like around well I'm not even a third done with the yarn I mean they're not all equally like a third either but like yeah I'm just surprised I knit this much with while still being on my first first ball of yarn so my plan for this is it would so the manhattan hat is worked bottom up so you do work the the brim first so it's a little hard to adjust if i want to use up as much yarn i would like to use up as much of this yarn as i can on this project and so at some point i'm going to have to figure out if i can i'm hoping i can actually do a double folded brim that would be ideal so we will see how much yarn. In the beginning, I was like, I don't think I'll have enough to make a double folded brim, but 
it might be possible. We will see. But yeah, that's what I have on it so far. Okay. And then, all right, are you ready for my two new cast-ons? Okay, this one I started last weekend. It was cast-on day for me and my friends to finally, finally start our boucle sweaters. I've been waiting forever to start on this, it feels like, and I'm so happy. So happy to be knitting with boucle again. So let me first just hold it up and then talk about it. Okay, this is the superlative sweater by Samantha Guerin. I don't know how to say her name. I should have looked that up before I started the video. But this is a new pattern. It like just recently came out and we were all like, yes, we, we were trying to figure out like what pattern are we going to use for our boucle knits. And I was like, I saw uh, Emily and Maya decided to, for their Rhinebeck matching sweaters, to knit cumulus blouses with their boucle. And I was like, yes, I want to make a boucle cumulus blouse. And so that was going to be my plan for this. But then the superlative sweater came out and we're like, oh, let's make that. So I am still planning on making a boucle cumulus blouse in the future. I bought a boucle sweater quantity from the Explore Knit Spain collection to make the cumulus blouse. So it is going to be a future thing. But for now, this one is going to be a superlative sweater. It is top down drop shoulder construction. And I thought, I didn't think too much of it at the time, but when I cast this on, I was like, ooh, that means, so you do work the back part first until the underarm, and then you pick up you pick up and knit the shoulders for the front. And I mean, boucle is like the fuzziest thing. And you, I mean, you can't really see the stitches. So honestly, it wasn't too bad to pick up as long as you're careful and you have good lighting and you just like look like I didn't, it wasn't too bad, but yeah, I was like, I mean, it's not, it's not that easy <laughs> to do, but oh man. I mean, but you don't even see a seam because it's just so fluffy. The fluff just covers it up. So anyway, we're all good now. We are joined in the round under the arm. So we've just got more knitting to do. The yarn I'm using, as I'm sure you're wondering, is Explore Knits Boucle DK in the colorway Oxide. And it's just such a cute pink. I want to say like, it's a darker, well, it is a darker pink, but it's almost like, it's like if, I feel like this could also be a completely wrong description, but I'm like, it's a rusty red, but pink version of it. <laughs> and I, I just love how it's looking. I think it's so cute. I love the fabric that it makes and I just, oh, and it, okay, maybe more like a brown pink, which I, I do love, so, but, I love the fabric that it's making. It's just, it's so soft, it's so fluffy. It's going to be like the coziest thing to wear as just like a sweatshirt, which is kind of like how I'm hoping that it all kind of turns out to be. I am knitting size two because I want, I definitely want this to be oversized. And I forgot though, like how much positive ease this will give me, but I do want, I want this to be roomy, like for sure. So I'm doing size two. And I'm using US 4 needles to make this. I did have to size down to get gauge. So, yeah. Boucle sweater. I am so happy to be knitting another boucle sweater. I only have one other... Oh, okay. I have one other boucle sweater, which I love. And then I also made a teddy zip, which is like a jacket in boucle held together. And so I do have like two garments. At first I was like, I think I only have one. I have two garments with boucle, but I love them both so much that I want another sweater. And I do 
I do have more boucle in my stash that I have plans to make to make more boucle knits. And so I'm pretty sure like this is only the start of my boucle knitting for the rest of this year. Like depending on how long this takes me to finish, like I don't know if so I don't know if it'll be next year or just going into next year, but right after this one, I'm going I have another boucle that I want to cast on. So yeah, very excited about this. And yeah, so that is new cast on number one. And then, oh, I just dropped it. Okay. Oh, and before I move on, just because I need to show you how cute it is. Look how cute it is in this game. It's so cute. I don't think it's focusing on it, but I think you can see how cute it is. It's so cute. Okay. Okay, next up. Okay, I just cast this on yesterday and it's kind of it's kind of a acquisition as well. But let me just like grab this here. So, if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen the story that I posted uh last week. I I was watching Only Murders in the Building, which is a show a series on Hulu that stars Selena Gomez, Steve Martin, and Martin Short, and it is so good. I love it so much. It's so funny, and I just really, I just really like it. And so the season three finale came out this past week, I think on Wednesday or Tuesday, actually Tuesday, and so good. And then, anyway, I was watching it, and Selena Gomez's character, she had great knits in this entire series I think because her character knits so I think the costume person like purposefully had her wear sweaters that were like like knit sweaters not hand knit but or not necessarily hand knit but kind of looked like they could have been hand knit by her and in the season three finale she wore this red sweater cabled sweater and I was like it looks like as soon as I saw it, I was like, it looks exactly like a Sari Nordland sweater pattern. The Fika, Fika, F-I-K-A pullover. And I was like, oh my gosh, it looks exactly like it. So I could make a matching one if I wanted to. And then the next day, Sari Nordland on her Instagram, I guess a lot of people messaged her saying the exact same thing. And so she... It, she came out with a discount code for her uh, Fika pullover pattern uh, just for this weekend and or from from then until I think today is the last day for the for the cu coupon code but I was like oh my gosh it was meant to be and I was at La Mercerie yesterday the yarn store on Bainbridge Island and I was like I am going to get some red yarn to make this sweater because I want a matching one so bad and so I did and then I also cast on last night there's not much to show but I would just show you, show you what I have it is just right now it's just one by one rib for the the neck that's all I have but it makes me very happy and excited about about or about making the sweater so Anyway, so this is a yarn. I'll probably, I don't know, do we kind of, it's also an acquisition, but I'll just talk about it here. I got, and thank you so much to my friends who were also at the store, helped me pick out a red because I wanted the red to be close to the shade of red that was, uh, that Selena Gomez was wearing in the show, but I wanted to make sure the red look, would look okay on me because I think the sweater was really uh, like a bright orangey red. And there was yarn that I think was a bright orangey red, but it kind of was just like, I think a little too bright for me. And then we found this one. And I think this, this works, this works well for me. I think it'll look good. Yeah, I hope. I don't know, I can't tell, but I think it'll look okay. And I think because it's red, I remember being like, I don't think I would ever make an all red sweater, but here we are, never say never. But I was like, I think it would be a really cute like Christmas sweater because it's, it'll be red. So that's kind of, will be 
when I am aiming to finish this, which just means finish this before the end of the year, which I think is doable because it is a worsted weight yarn. And oh, colorway, so this is pomegranate, which honestly I think is maybe not the best color name for it. Like I, to me, I feel like pomegranate's more, actually, I don't know. I guess for some reason I don't see pomegranate in this red, but eh, who's, who's to say? But it is, that is the colorway that I got. And I am making size one and I'm using US, okay, for the ribbing, I mean, I'm using US three needles, which it actually says for the ribbing to use US four, but I don't have any US four needles. So, or that are available, like they're all on projects. And I could, I'm just way too lazy to take them off of the current projects. So I'm using US three, but I think that that'll be fine since it'll just be the ribbing. And then, I will use US6, which is the recommended needle size for the cabling in the body. So yeah, so that is my newest cast on. Yeah, okay. Now on to spinning. We're in the spinning section of the video. Okay, I've got some good spinning updates, I feel like. So let's first talk about my current, oh, oh, actually, let's talk about my latest finished object for my spinning because then we can probably just talk about, I don't know, today's video might be all over the place, but we can talk about the spinning class that I was part of. So um, as I, I'm pretty sure I mentioned last week, uh, me and two of my friends, Katie and Megan, did, we signed up for the spinning class at La Mercerie, which is a store on Bainbridge Island. And Maya, Maya was the teacher of the class, and she is what Maya made on Instagram. If you don't already follow her, she works at La Mercerie on Saturdays, and so excited when we heard that there was going to be a spinning class. So we took it. It was for two Saturdays. So the first Saturday was last week, and that was when we learned about the wheel and so La Mercerie now sells Kromsky wheels and although only in store like not online but they do sell Kromsky wheels and so as part of the class we got to so we learned how to spin on the first day we learned how to spin our singles and they she gave us two different kinds of fiber to work with so one was a white colored one and it was cheviot wool and the second one was a gray jacob wool and i think it's so smart that she did two different colors because the idea is that we would ply each one on their own bobbins and then on the second day, so and then we would have our homework for the week after the first class we could take home the wheel and practice and spin the rest of our fiber and then on the second class, which was yesterday, we brought back the wheels to the store and then we learned how to ply. And so now we would have a, since each like ply is a different color, when we ply them together, it'd be a lot easier to see how they are twisting and what it looks like, which I think was genius and so smart to do. And so yeah, so we finished the class yesterday and I have a finished skein from the class. So it is, we had, I think about two ounces of fiber total and we got a little skein like this. And I love how the two, the gray and the white look spun together in a two ply. And it was just so fun. It was so fun. And if you are in the area, I, I think she sold out of her next round of uh, the spinning class, but if she offers more of it, I would highly recommend doing it because she was the best teacher. Like I, so I think it was two hours for each class, like each session. And she went, I think it was the perfect amount of time was spent on kind of like theory and like talking through like parts of the wheel and the names of things and like names of technique and like 
how you do something, why you would do something, how to troubleshoot if like something happened while you were spinning. And then just like having us try to do the spinning and she was able to, the class size was three, three people. And so she was able to go around individually to help us and watch what we were doing and give us some extra tips. And we had lots of questions for her and she was so kind and answered all of our questions. And if she didn't know something, she looked it up or like asked other friends and like overall such a great experience. And overall, I, I, I want a wheel. I want a wheel. So it's a big purchase. It is a big purchase, but I, I just know that I like spinning and from this like one week trial we had with the wheel and spinning on it like I I know that I would I would use a wheel and I would love it and I think that having like a an actual wheel and an e-spinner like they both have benefits to it and so I will definitely still be spinning on my e-spinner because I, I do like it but yeah I think it would just be fun to have like options to spin so so yeah, my finished, my one finished object for my spinning. Well, so my throat is getting a little sore now. I think I've been talking for a really long time. This video might be long, but I still have more things to talk about, but I will try and go through the rest a little quicker, but here's my skin. I think it looks so good. I'm now like, so I haven't like I haven't wet finished this. I haven't washed it. So it's still a little like, yeah, I'm just curious to see how it looks washed up. So yeah, but that is what this one looks like. I'm so happy. I'm also so proud of my friends who like, so Megan, this was her absolute like first time ever spinning and hers looks so good for the first spin. So good. And Katie's too. So she also got a electric ear wheel nano at the same time I bought mine and so we've done but she hasn't like spun as much as me since then but like she has tried to spin it a little bit and like so like every time every time she has a knee spin it looks so good it looks so much better so much improvement and I think that that is what is so fun about spinning is because I think like almost like every time you sit down and spin even if it's just for a short amount of time like you can see improvement. You can start to feel a little more comfortable and get a, a better feel for like what's actually happening. So yeah, I just think it's so fun. Okay, I still have more spinning things to talk about. So let's move on to that. I do still have a current spin that I'm working on using my e-spinner. So I just finished my so I bought two braids of the nest fiber super fine merino in the colorway paper kites I bought two braids I finished one like fully well except for scanning it and washing it but the plying is done so I started my second braid and I'm doing a fractal spin again and so this is my first half of my singles and so the first half is done and I just have I thought it would be cool to show like how I kind of prepped the fiber so this is the second my the second half that I split into four sections and so yeah this is how I usually um, like keep the fiber so I will split them all into the way that I want it to before I actually start spinning and so now I have four balls of the fiber and so I will just spin these end to end like that. So they're all ready to go but I just have it started on the second half. Yeah and I usually just kind of keep them in the bag that the fiber came in to just keep it somewhat organized and easy to carry around. And then let's kind of start to move into acquisitions because I do have some fiber acquisitions as well. Since we're on the Nest Fiber Club, the other day, I, oh my gosh, this light thing is kind of bothering me. I'll move more back here. So yesterday, day before, I got my September Nest Fiber Club 
in the mail and this time so I am in the mixed fiber club so I get different kinds of fiber which I think for for me right now is the most fun because then I get to try all of these different kinds of fiber and see how it feels to spin different fiber and because they come in cute colors like it's like extra fun and so this one this month or yes, September is Cormo I don't think I've spun with Cormo yet and the colorway is Garden Path. And it just looks so pretty. I love, I mean, every time there's just like a little bit of pink in there, I'm like, yes. But, oh, I just love, I just love it. Pink, darker blues, and some orange, green. I like it. I'm very happy with it. I've been very happy. I think this is the third month of the that I've been part of the Nest Fiber Club and I've just, I've been loving it so far. Makes me very happy. So that is that acquisition. And then I also got, so La Mercerie also sells fiber, but not on their online store, just in store. So I, I've been thinking about this, this one since I saw it. And I was like, I'm gonna, if I get one fiber braid, it will be this one. This is the first, first time I, this is Wee Chickadee. So this is my first fiber braid from Wee Chickadee. So I'm very excited to try this. The, so it is Targi, which I have spun with before and I've liked it. But I, the Targi, when I, or the first, first slash last because it was the only I've only spun with Tari once and that time I tried to spin I wanted to try to spin something thicker and I love how the yarn came out but I do want to try to spin Targi smaller or at a thinner weight and so I definitely want to see how the differences between like spinning the same kind of fiber thinner versus thicker like I want to see how that feels how it how easy or hard it is to spin. I just want to kind of experiment. And uh, anyway, yes, so this is Targi, Targi. And the colorway is opalescent. It's so, it's so pretty. I feel, oh, uh, it's so pretty. And I also just want to I just feel like whenever I'm holding a fiber braid, I just kind of want to like Hold it and cuddle it like this. It's so, it's so cute. Okay. Yeah, so that that's this one fiber braid that I bought yesterday. I can't wait to spin it. Can't wait, but I, I have current things I want to spin. Uh, but yeah, and then I... Let's check my notes. Oh, yes, okay. We also, during the class, we... As you can see, like we did put it into a hank, hank, skein. And to do that, so the way that I have been transferring my plied yarn from the bobbin into a skein or a hank or whatever, was I would get my yarn swift and I would, I would spin it to get it onto there. And it was just not not the most fun thing to do. And so, but I was like, oh, it's something I have in it so I don't have to buy something else. But we used a Nitty Naughty. And, and okay, the reason I paused was because it's such a weird, it's a funny name. And it's also spelled not the way that I thought it was spelled. It's N-I-D-D-Y, N-O-D-D-Y, which I just think is so funny. But we used a Nitty Naughty, and Maya taught us how to use one. And I was like, oh, this is such a better experience than winding it onto my, my Swift. And so I decided to get one as well. And so I didn't open the package. I haven't used mine yet, but so I bought myself a, it's a Kromsky Nitty Naughty. And I'm looking forward to staining up like an entire like fiber braid onto this once I'm done with my current spin. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I'm happy to have this. I feel like it's, it's like, 
I obviously my other skeins have looked fine. They worked out fine the way that I've had them. I don't think having this is completely like necessary, but it is something that is nice to have. And because I know I will be spinning for a long time, it's something is definitely like a hobby that I am going to put a lot of time into. I want the experience to be as like smooth as possible for as many steps of the spinning process as can be. So got myself a really nice nitty knotty. And oh the only other the only other acquisition was the yarn that I already talked about that I'm making my Fika pullover in. The knitting for olive heavy merino. So yeah, so that is it for the acquisition section. I'm just looking around to make sure. Oh, I have, so one more thing is today is cast on day for me and some other friends uh, to do the slightly sassy V. And so as far as I know of right now, it is me, Shreya, and Sharon. And we are all making slightly sassy Vs. The pattern by Amy Schur in the most like luxurious yarn I think I own. Oh, so this is the swatch and it's like, oh, it's so good. So this is Fua Fua from Moondrake and we all got some, I believe we all got our skeins that we're making for this from Flock. And so, yeah, let me just hold this up because I was like, oh my gosh, it is like, it is so pretty. I love the color. So mine's is a light pink. It's so fluffy and soft. And I'm just like, oh my, I cannot wait to have, oh, I had to have a full sweater of this. Let me show it to you in the, oh my, it is, it is, oh my, it's so soft. It's so soft. So I will have more to say about this in next week's video once I actually cast it on. Uh, but yeah, so that is future plans as of right now. So I'm trying to think, is that it? I think that that is it. And yeah, my throat is getting a little sore from all the talking. I think because I also, since I was out yesterday, just did a lot more talking than I normally do. So, so yeah. Oh, as far as next weekend, so I am going to be busy next weekend doing some fun knitting related things slash spinning things so I don't I also will not be able to film next Saturday I might be able to film next Sunday uh, so I will say like I do not know if I will have a video next weekend if I don't I will have one the weekend after and I'll have so much to share but I just wanted to say that just in case I am unable to put out a video next weekend. But yeah, there's a lot. I feel like there's a lot of stuff going on. I do have tomorrow, which is a Monday. I have the day off from work, which is wonderful. And so I am just like a full day of knitting. This is, this is my hope for tomorrow. So hoping to get a lot done since I want to get a lot of stuff done this week knitting wise and spinning wise. So yeah, I just have lots, lots to look forward to feeling a little busy, but also really grateful for just all of the good times, fun times and all of the friends that I have. So thank you so, so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And whenever I'm like signing off for the episode, I feel like I'm missing something, but Hope you are all having a great day on whichever day you are watching this. As always, let me know in the comments down below what you have been working on while listening or watching this podcast because I love to hear it. And yeah, I hope that you all have a great rest of your week and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.